All right, everybody. This is the uh, Drexel Dragoon CSL stream. This is our our uh, fourth, fifth week of CSL, I believe, and we have a uh, SMI horse spawning as the Protoss player in the south of the map, and NR Glistal spawning as the Zerg player in the north of the map. One second, guys. All right, and we do see cross positions on the map, so we can expect a slightly longer game. It's going to be a little harder for Protoss to do any early pressure or cheese. And this map is also very easy for Protoss to expand on. And we are going to see the Forge, fa Forge Fast expand from Horst here. And he does send his probe out to scout. We do see Glistal sending out his first Overlord. It looks like pretty standard play here. And the first two drones coming out after the Overlord. And if it's laggy, someone let me know, because it might be me, and I can just uh, stop the stream. And the forge going down, so it will indeed be a forge fast expand from SMI Horst. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what he goes into. There's a lot of options off of Forge Fast Expand. You can do air pressure. You can do heavy gate play. Go into quick robotech. And it looks like we're going to see a, a, a 13 pool with no gas from Glistal. So uh, it looks like a gasless expand. Um, and the Forge is about to finish for our Protoss player. Let's see. Hopefully he goes Nexus first. Um... And there is the hatchery. No, no, I'm sorry. The evolution chamber going down for NR Glistal. And the first gateway goes down before the nexus. It looks like NR Glistal has actually dropped the evo chamber in the natural expansion of SMI Horse. This is very annoying for Protoss players because he will have to get some units out before he can do anything about that evo chamber. I actually like that a lot. That's a really interesting move. So it looks like he'll drop his cannons first and do something before getting the expansion, as he does have to have some units. And this cannon is going to be doing a nice amount of damage against his Evo Chamber. It will delay a uh, horse, but probably not by that much. But I still do. I do like that. And we see the four Zerglings out here chasing across the map. These cannons will be up in time, and they will be able to easily stop these Zerglings from getting into the base. Yeah, that was a nice move with that Evo Chamber. And the first gas and side core going down for Protoss. It looks like pretty standard, and the Broodlings will get that worker. That that's that's tough. <coughs> and another hatchery, double expanding early in the game. This is this is interesting. He's he sees the Forge fast expand, and I assume that he thinks he can get away with this extra expansion because he knows that there probably won't be any real Protoss pressure until the nine ten minute mark. Uh, it's it's interesting. Um, I wonder if he's going to be able to hold this. And we do see the Nexus going down here, so he is indeed expanding a little later than he'd like to. But Protoss does have a slight worker lead, so um, that is the cost of doing that, that Evo chamber in the natural expansion there. And this circling spread is nice. It's going to really make sure he sees what's going out of the base. <laughs> And no tech yet for our Zerg player, and he has no gases taken, so... Could this be a Spanishiwa style build? It kind of looks like it, with the double expand going early. And we see a first Stalker coming out here for Protoss. And Warp Gate Research going down. Two gases on the main, and the natural expansion is still not completed. And it looks like this hatch here at the third is just about to finish. And we do see a second gateway in production for Protoss. And plus one weapons. Um, pretty early plus one weapons, but uh, could be used in... I mean, I'm assuming that he's going to do some kind of gateway push now that he's going for the ground weapons and hasn't thrown down any, uh, any secondary tech. And he will scout out with his first stalker. Going to get some Zergling kills here pretty easily. 
and we see the gas finally going down on the main for uh, NR Glistal. And two more gateways for our Protoss player. That's right now he's up to four, so it's looking like he's going to go for some heavy gateway pressure. Five gates. And I don't really like this opening here. This is really exposed, but, you know. Three. Warp gate research is just about to finish, and the plus one is about halfway done. It looks like uh, Glistal is getting some nice saturation on these bases here. Uh, in the unit per in the unit counting station, he is ten workers ahead right now. It's pretty nice. So he does have the uh, economic advantage, and we'll see if he can hold it here against some pressure. Still no real tech structures for our Zerg player. It looks like he's going for some kind of Zergling heavy style, getting that Evo chamber now for himself instead of just to block the uh, block the expansion from Protoss. And we see uh, Zergling Speed just coming up now at the 8 minute mark. So this is indeed kind of a Spanishiwa style of play. Expanding first, uh, holding with Queens against early Protoss pressure. And I expect to see this 5 gate push coming out of Protoss pretty soon as the plus 1 weapons upgrade finishes. Zergling's coming across the map to do some quick scouting. And they will hold position in the middle of the map. And it looks like uh, we have a Spore Crawler and Layer Tech going down. But still, no no real tech buildings. Um, possibly going for infestors or mutalisks. That's that's my predictions here. We do see the zerglings getting upgraded further with the ground carapace and more zerglings in production. And it looks like Protoss is starting to move across the map with a few units. And he will take the watchtower. And it looks like uh, Glistal is going into full-on production mode, producing 22 Zerglings. And I assume Metabolic Boost will be done just in time for this engagement. And looks like Horst is going to choose to break down the back rocks to this third. Pretty good choice. But it will delay him in his push. And he is very far behind in the economy, as he just threw down a Twilight Council. Roach tech is going down for our Zerg player. He sees the push coming. He knows he can't really tech up quickly to anything else. He's probably going to need more than just Zerglings. But these Zerglings are surrounding, and some sloppy force fields do some serious damage, but the Zerglings do choose to retreat. And it looks like he's going for a very sentry-heavy style here. Warping in some Zealots. And it looks like we have some lag here. If it's, it, I mean, there are a lot of people specking this game, so that could definitely have something to do with it. Mm. People should leave. And at the same time, we see that we do have the burrow going down while we, uh, while we check out this lag problem. And uh, we're going to get back into this game. So it looks like Protoss is going to continue on this five gate push with a Twilight Council tech. And he is taking a third. So he is thinking of the longer game here. This is, does not seem to be a complete all in. And the Spire is going down for Glistal. These Zerglings are going to rush in and get a nice surround on these Sentries and Stalkers. And the Force Fields are going to be pretty ineffective here. There are a lot of Zealots, though. They are cleaning it up pretty well. But losing those Sentries is some serious damage in this part of the game. And these Zerglings are going to move back as Protoss continues to push up or stays a little hesitant at the base of the ramp. And these Zerglings are going to get this pylon, which is really, really rough for Protoss, as he does have to enforce. And he's moving in against Roaches with uh, five Zealots and some some sentries. He's doing pretty decent damage though, but the roaches are probably going to end up winning this fight. The sentries are helping, but more reinforcing roaches and seven roaches in production. Nine roaches in production. And the dark shrine and charge going down for our Protoss player. Um, I guess he feels like he's a bit at a deficit with his burrow roach uh, strategy. He completely cleaned up that five gate push, but he has taken his third. It looks like SMI Horst is at a huge disadvantage right now. And we do see Glial Reconstitution going down for, for Zerg player. So it does look like he's going into some kind of Roach, probably Muta or maybe Roach Broodlord play. 
he still doesn't have uh he doesn't have hive tech, so he can't tech any tier three units just yet. And pneumatized carapace, so potentially we're gonna see some uh some some speed overlords as oh look at all these roaches pushing across the map. And I don't think SMI Horst has what it takes to hold this push right now. Zealots are not very good against roaches. And the Dark Shrine is just about to finish, so with some nice Dark Templar, it doesn't look like there's any detection here. So, and the Infestation Pit going down for Zerg as uh, Glistal is attempting to push into the back of the third. And Zerg Flyer attacks level 1, uh, starting. We still don't see any air units being produced by the Zerg Flyer, but I assume he's rushing to Broodlords, getting the Infestation Pit for the high. And these Zealots are not going to do very much damage against a Roach Army like this. Some decent force fields, but really... Oh, these Dark Templar are going to come in, and they will be able to do some damage to these Roaches, forcing Glistal to retreat until he has some form of detection. And these Dark Templar are actually doing some, some really good damage right now. But the Burrow is nice, and there is no detection here for our Protoss player. He does not have a Robo Bay. In the meantime, we see this third getting defended, and we also see the gold being taken by the Zerg player, getting up to his fourth base at 14 minutes. Some very nice creep spread, too. And the flyer attacks is, is pretty close to finishing, but he still has no air units. He's building some defensive spine crawlers. Where are those going down? Probably, yeah, whatever. And the overseer's here, so he will be able to stop any of this Dark Templar threat. We see some Stalkers and more DTs. At this point, um, morphing them into Archons would probably be the better choice, as he does have a huge Roche composition. And the Robo finally going down for a Protoss, so we can get some detection against these Burrowed Roaches and possibly some Immortals. And it looks like Zerg is going to be able to take this gold base completely uncontested. Link starting for the Protoss player with Ground Weapons Level 2 just about to finish. But we do see even more Zerglings in production. Still absolutely no air units on the field. And this Roach army is marching around the map. Uh, it's complete map control right now as he's transferring his workers to his new gold base. And Protoss is looking pretty thin against this. He doesn't have the amount of gateways or production tech required to quickly reinforce against an army like this. And his economy is quickly falling behind. <coughs> In the unit counting station, um, we see 92 drones to 62 uh, probes. That's a, that's a huge difference. I mean, he might have over-droned a bit, but... Either way, he has four bases, and that's really going to help him to constantly reinforce wave again, wave after wave of units against this Protoss player. And the first Infestors are coming out with Corruptors, and he is going to the Greater Spire, so it looks like he's going for some kind of Infestor Broodlord break on this Protoss third. I honestly think he could probably go break it right now, but, you know... We do see him moving, getting some saturation up on this gold base, and the first Immortal coming out for Protoss... I think these Broodlords are going to catch him completely off guard as we have a uh, Overlord. An Overlord uh, dropping creep in the main. And Blink is just about to finish. The The map is completely covered in creep right now. And we do see the first Templar Archives going down. Uh, I don't know where. And plus three weapons. That is going to help. But uh, as Zerg takes his fifth base here at the North Expansion, it's not looking very good for Horst, who cannot seem to get the same amount of supply right now from uh, losing that early 5-gate pressure. And he is starting to morph these into Archons, which I think is a good call against uh, the Roaches. And two Immortals in production, which will be very helpful, but he's not going to see these Broodlords coming. He has no scouting tech, and it looks like right now Glistal has complete domination of the entire map, taking a fifth... fifth? Sixth base in the uh, top right corner of the map. So really, he's just expanding everywhere right now. And Protoss is going to have a hell of a time cleaning up the entire map if he wants to win this game. And Psystorm coming out with the two Immortals just about to finish. And the Ultralist Cavern going down for Zerg. Six Broodlords morphing in. Oh, man. Six Broodlords. And Glistal is maxed with uh, different tech tree options for when he loses some units. So let's see how uh, Horst fares against this engagement. It looks like Glistal is just about to start pushing. 
Pistol's just about to start pushing here. They're dancing around the map a little bit, and the Broodlords are going to come down to engage over the high ground, and Protoss is in a really tough position right here. He has this heavy Immortal count to deal with the Roaches that he saw in the early game, but his Stalker count is not that high. He's not going to be able to handle all of these Broodlords while taking the damage from the Zerglings and the Roaches. Some nice Guardian Shields and Force Fields, but the Broodlords are not really taking any damage, and it looks like Horst will call the GG, and Glistal will take the first game.